What's up? Welcome back to the Metalhead Car Show. Power Trip has been announced, hosting some of the finest metal to come from the 1970s, 80s, and 90s. Today we're going to be looking into the bands, the ticket prices, the festival itself, and what I think on it. Without wasting any more time, let's get right into it. For a show like this, Metallica is an obvious choice. They've been one of the biggest metal bands on the entire planet for almost what seems like the bulk of their career. If you have a metal fest or a hard rock fest that's looking at bands from the 1980s and you want the biggest band you can possibly get, Metallica is the obvious choice. So the festival is being held on the Coachella grounds. And the last time Metallica was actually there, they were actually doing the West Coast Big Four show with Slayer, Megadeth, and Anthrax. Now the whole tour Metallica is doing leading up to this show, they're doing the two nights in each city, doing no repeats each time. So for this show, what I'm expecting is their standard end of stage setup with a handful of brand new songs, probably four, five, six brand new songs, and the hits. I don't expect anything weird to come from Metallica. I think they're gonna play exactly what people wanna hear, and they'll be a great way to close off the festival on October 8th. ACDC was the band that was a complete shock to see. I know ACDC was planning on doing a tour back in 2020, but, well, 2020 happened, that killed all those plans. So the fact that this is what they're doing to come back is actually pretty cool. Adding to that, ACDC actually started their Rocker Bus Tour back in 2015, I believe, at Coachella. So it's kind of cool where it's not a full circle sort of thing, but they're starting back here again. Anyone who watches this channel knows that Iron Maiden's my favorite band, we'll be talking about them shortly, but ACDC is definitely the big one for this festival. Like, it could be argued that Metallica is bigger, but ACDC is definitely more special. This will be their first show since 2016. This will likely be their first show where they're going to be doing power-up songs, and this is completely unconfirmed, but it'll likely be the first ACDC show with both Brian Johnson and Phil Rudd since 2010. So what am I expecting from ACDC? I'm expecting two or three power-up songs, and then after that, nothing but hits. I'd personally love to hear some stuff from Flick of the Switch or Fly on the Wall, but for this show, I don't see it happening. Now I'll say it now, I don't expect any of these bands to really be posting North American tours to go along with this festival, which I might be wrong with that, but truthfully, that's kind of what I'm expecting to not happen. But for ACDC, it's super cool to see that they're back, they're playing shows, and we'll more than likely see a North American tour, at, well, a world tour, very soon. Guns N' Roses is arguably bigger than ever right now, especially in North America. So if we're doing a festival that's looking at 1980s hard rock and metal, again, they're a pretty obvious pick. But they're also one of the bands I'm actually kind of most surprised to see that they're on this lineup. The lineup was actually leaked out on Tuesday. It's not Guns N' Roses on there, but seeing Guns N' Roses, well, seeing any band above Iron Maiden is kind of weird at this point. So seeing that, I truly thought Guns N' Roses was just somebody's sort of dream pick, and I was actually kind of banking on it being Judas Priest, because Priest and Maiden talk about doing something together, and this seems a perfect festival for it to happen. But Guns N' Roses are here, and truthfully, it makes sense. They are massive in North America. This will be the first time we see Guns N' Roses on the Coachella site since they did their performance back in 2016. So what do I expect? I expect hit after hit after hit after hit, and maybe either they'll join ACDC or ACDC will join them on stage since they kind of worked together back in 2016. But that's my expectations for Guns N' Roses. Iron Maiden was the reason I started paying attention to this festival, and they are kind of in the really cool yet really weird spot for me. Iron Maiden's performance here is actually kind of significant, because it's the first time they've done an American festival since 2012. It'll be the first time since 
Ozfest 2005, where they played a show and didn't headline the night. I know it's co-headlining, but Guns N' Roses are closing, so I'm giving it to Guns N' Roses. And it'll be the first time since 1985 that Maiden goes somewhere completely off course for the tour, purely do a one-off show, where that show back in 1985 was Rock in Rio. Rio de Janeiro, Rock in Rio, yeah! Now I want to go over some Iron Maiden stuff towards why they're a little bit weird for this one. Uh, the first thing is they don't do one-off shows, and they don't really open for anybody at this point. So I want to know what astronomical quantity of money they were offered to do this show where they couldn't turn down whatever they're going to be getting. Second thing, a lot of people kind of speculated what they're going to be doing, whether they're going to be doing like a full classics set list to kind of blend in with the other bands, or they're going to be doing the Future Past Tour. Iron Maiden has stated this show will be a part of the Future Past Tour. That's the set list we bring, that's the stage production we're going to be bringing, and whatever they will be playing in Europe this year is more than likely exactly what they'll be playing when they do this festival. Do I think a North American tour is be coming out of this? Honestly, no. Do I think a North American tour is be coming from this? Honestly, no. I think 2023 is going to be Europe and this one show. And I think 2024 is where we're getting North America, South America, and possibly bits of Asia and Australia as well. Being a one-off show, I think this would be a really cool performance for Maiden, because as I've said, it's be part of the Future Past Tour, so it's not going to be anything different or unique, but it will be a one-off show, so they're all going to be super well-rested for this, and I think it'll be a really high-energy show from them. Ozzy Osbourne, kind of the next biggest surprise of this entire lineup. I'm pretty surprised Ozzy's playing this show because truthfully he hasn't been looking amazing and he has said he's been retiring from touring. But I guess that doesn't really eliminate one-off shows, so it's very cool to see him do this. And I've heard so many people say every one of this festival could be a headliner. Ozzy's absolutely no exception, but truthfully, due to his health, I think having him open for ACDC the second night is probably the best idea. Where if Ozzy feels like he's only really able to do like 45 minutes on stage, it's not going to seem that weird. We're not going to have a band play for two full hours prior to Ozzy, and Ozzy go on and do maybe a short set. So I think that was very good planning. But also, it's not like Ozzy Osbourne's ever going to headline over ACDC. What do I expect? I expect one new song, I expect a handful of Black Sabbaths trickled in there, and I expect the Ozzy hits. Although if you really want to screw with the mood of the entire festival and pull out Diary of Mad Men, I'd be more than happy with that. As I said earlier, I don't see any bands touring on this, and Ozzy Osbourne's absolutely no exception. Truthfully, I think this is the only 2023 show we're going to be seeing from Ozzy, but I think it's kind of a special one to pick. I think Tool is kind of one of the most interesting picks for this because I think they're kind of so off to a different direction from a lot of these other bands. They're kind of the most unique band at that point. Truthfully, I expected this slot to be filled with Pantera. Pantera kind of fits the uh, bill a little bit better and they've been touring Metallica so having them open on Metallica's night kind of makes sense to me. But with Tool and Metallica playing together on that final night, I think it's going to be absolutely packed. Every night to be packed, but you know what I mean. And Tool's actually played these grounds at Coachella multiple times, so they're no stranger to this area. So it'll actually be really cool to see them come back and do this. Now, I'll leave a link in the description to the actual festival so you can go see ticket prices and whatnot. But I'll say ticket prices start at $600 for the three-day weekend, and it goes up to $3,000 for the three-day weekend VIP package. Now, $600 for the weekend? Honestly, I think some people are going to complain, but truthfully, it's not that bad. There's going to be a lot of time, effort, and work that's going to go into making this festival happen, along with these bands. And truthfully, I think for a lot of these bands, you're going to be paying about 100 bucks a piece, if not more, to see them. So, 600 bucks for the weekend isn't that bad. Now, for a lot of these special packages that are starting at $2,000 and up, that's a lot of money, especially when you kind of start looking at it as for six bands, that's a crazy amount of money for six bands. Now I know unfortunately some of these ticket prices are becoming a bit more common at the shows, but honestly I could never justify spending that much money on a show. 
Some people can, I can't. So what's my thoughts on Power Troop? Truthfully, I think it is slightly odd. Very cool, but slightly odd. So the term Mega Festival is used to describe this festival a lot. And Mega Festivals, in my mind, goes to things like uh, the When We Were Young Festival and the Sick New World Festival, where you have 60 to 70 bands crammed into three days and all of them being really top-notch bands in that genre. So truthfully, I was expecting a lot of bands from the 80s and the 90s, maybe some even newer bands to be put into the bill and it'd be a mega fest. But we have these six and these six are all awesome bands. But I don't know, I think a lot of people expected a little bit more than the six. Even appropriate opener open each night, someone still big, but never nearly as big as the six we got, I think even that would make a lot more sense. And for whatever it's worth, for each day, if we were to have an opening band, the Iron Maiden Guns N' Roses Day, I'd throw in Halloween. For the Ozzy Osbourne ACDC Day, I'd throw in Greta Van Fleet. And for the Tool Metallica Day, I'd throw in Megadeth. I'm also fascinated to see how this festival is going to go, both on logistics and containing people's egos. All these bands have been around long enough where they should know how to actually work with other bands, but also, let's be real, there's going to be a lot of egos going on, and I won't be shocked if that gets in the way of some things. So, would I go? If I won the lottery tomorrow, absolutely I'd go. This does sound like a lot of fun. But would I drop everything and go, knowing it's going to cost? With flights and accommodations and the festival and going and getting food, do I think spending $6,000 on this, at minimum, is the right move? Honestly, I don't. Four of the six bands tour very regularly. We know ACDC is getting back into it, so we'll likely see them on the road in your city very soon. So I don't know if I could justify this one. And that is not to, to deter anybody from going. If you are going, I hope you have an absolute blast at this. But I want to know, what do you think? Is this something you would attend to? Slash, is this something you're going to be attending? Please let me know, that sounds awesome. Or are you going to pass it up and just wait for these bands to come to you? Let me know in the comments. Thank you all so much for watching. Like, subscribe if you enjoyed what you've seen. I post on Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday, and I'll see you later.